Hey everyone, my name is Sheridan and I will be online host for today's service. Welcome to Every Nation Sunny Hill. It's so great to have you here. I hope that you're all just having a fantastic week and um, I hope that you're rejoicing because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my little song. It's actually one of my little sister's uh, favorite songs, uh, worship songs. So yeah, um, please feel free to pop a comment uh, on Facebook and to just share with us from where you are joining and who you're joining with, whether you're watching a church online with a family member with a friend or yeah we just would love to hear from you if this is your first time joining us here at every nation sunny hill i would like to share with you a little bit more about our church our vision is that we see lives community society transformed through discipleship in the word the presence and the power of god god's desire is that we will all find freedom i would now like to open for us in prayer Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Thank you that we just have the gift of life and are able to gather here. Um, I really pray, Lord, that during the service, people will um, be free from distractions and just be able to um, really connect with your presence and um, really find encouragement and hope in, in the message that is preached. I also just pray, Lord, that you'll help us to have the spirit of worship and to, to worship you truly and purely, Lord. May our eyes be completely fixed on you, Jesus. And um, yeah, may you take away all our worry and everything that that um, might cause us from uh, fully being uh, aware of your presence that is so close to us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today, Gracefield is preaching for us, and to give you a bit of background about Gracefield, she is the head of counseling ministry at Every Nation Sunny Hill, and she serves alongside with her husband Richard. They mainly focus on divorce and trauma counseling. Today, she will be continuing for us on the series, What is Not Normal About the New Normal, and her sermon title is Glorious Light. I would now like to invite you all into a time of worship with singing. The Word of God says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So I hope you guys will all enjoy and I will see you after the sermon. Bye.
You know how my heart feeds Off of your mercy When I am hurting I know you know what my heart needs So when I feel broken And when I don't feel chosen 24-7, 365 I know your door is still open Whether I'm reaping or sowing And faith is coming or going When I've been planting for years and years But nothing is growing You are my constant, you are consistent You are unwavering, you are persistent may change but you said the same and i will give praise to your glorious name i can look and and turn around it show me your number i'm going to turn around the father sometimes another day is i to you are with me, get turned up a baggy. I trust you, I'm never shaking, I'm never moved. I only move when I give praise to you. When I give praise to you, yo. When I give praise to you, yo. So when I give praise to you, so when I give praise to you.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Every Nation Sunning Hill. My name is Grace Field. 
This past week, uh, the past few weeks, we've actually been doing a series, What is Not Normal About the New Normal? The first week, um, Timber spoke about myopia, which is a narrow vision uh, condition that one has, and he encouraged us to broaden our vision, to have an attitude of faith, to speak to the mountain in front of us and to take action and be accountable to others. Jude uh, spoke about the people that influence and change things. He spoke about Henry Ford that implemented the 40-hour working week. The Wright brothers, they brought flying into our frame of reference. And he encouraged us to connect with God, to connect to Jesus' mission for us, but also, very importantly, to connect to each other. Last week, Timber spoke about and gave us the acronym of LIGHT, L standing for Lordship and Jesus, I influence through prayerful service, G godly character, H, Holy Spirit power, and T, take the gospel to the world. I have titled my sermon, Depression into Glorious Light. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can come to you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, depression does not define us, Christ does. Thank you that, Lord, when we speak about something that is so very real in this time for so many, that you speak in us and through us, Lord, to give hope. Hope, Lord, that brings the glorious light of Jesus Christ into our lives and shines out for others to receive. And I pray that, Lord, today as I speak, that you will speak in me and through me. In Jesus' name, amen. The World Health Organization estimates that there's around 350 million people who battle with depression. I am almost certain that that figure is so much more at this time in this pandemic. I'd like to focus just a little bit as, as I start with some historical figures that battled with depression and then also look at some biblical figures that battled with depression. So Isaac Newton, was a scientist, a mathematician. He battled with manic depression, was suicidal, and had such severe mood swings that he was actually extremely difficult to work with. Abraham Lincoln, the USA president in time of the Civil War, was suicidal and battled with depression most of his life. Queen Victoria, the Queen of England, battled with depression as a young lady and then much later in her life, but especially after her husband died, she battled with depression, which they believe contributed to her death. Winston Churchill, the UK president, uh, prime minister in the time of World War II, fr fr said this about depression in his own life. He said, it is a black dog leaping for my throat. Now, I chose these people very specifically because these were all people that believed in Jesus Christ. Hold that, hold that thought, I'm coming back to it. Let's look at some biblical characters. Joseph in, in Psalm 105 verses 17 to 18, and I'm referring to the Amplified here. We are told that his soul was put into irons. I don't know of a better description of depression than that. We know of Job that battled with depression. We know of Jer Jeremiah, who's called the lamenting prophet. Elijah, after Jer Jezebel threatened to kill him, goes into a cave and, and battles with depression. The psalmist in Psalm 42, verse 5, asks the question, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? He speaks in verse 3 of his tears being as food, and in verse 10, of it feeling like his bones are breaking. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 1 verses 8 to 9 says, For we do not want to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia. We do not want you, sorry, to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia. That we, are, we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, 
that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. I end with Jesus also battled with depression. We see this in Matthew 26, verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. So what is depression? Let me start with what it is not. Depression is not caused just by chemical imbalances. Depression is not always demonic. Nor is it a lack of faith. Quite the contrary, depression is often a signal to deeper issues in our lives that need to be healed. Depression has multiple causes, and I'm going to take the time to actually share some of those causes with you. There's biological and genetic causes. This is where the chemical imbalances in the brain come out. Lack of sleep can cause depression. Insufficient exercise. Side effects of medication. Physical illness. And an improper diet. There are more. These are but a few. There's psychological and cognitive causes. When people have experienced emotional and physical rejection, especially as a child, where there are unrealistically high and rigid standards that parents place on children. The elderly, when they feel useless and of no value to society anymore. When there is death, and we have faced death on every side in this time of pandemic. The divorce, prolonged separation from loved ones, loss of opportunity. Again, something that so many in, in this time of pandemic have experienced. We have experienced the loss of opportunity. So many people have tried to start businesses and it's fallen flat. So many people have been promised a job and it hasn't appeared. Loss of health, loneliness and abandonment. And again, there are more within this category. Then we have social and environmental. And we just need to look at the news to know that this country has been through some political turmoil these last few weeks. To know what that does to the psyche of a person. Financial difficulties, unemployment. Our country has a, an incredibly high rate of unemployment. Abuse of marriages. Demands of caring for a chronically ill or terminally ill person. And again, there are more. But I don't feel to focus on those anymore. What I do want to focus on now is symptoms of depression. And I beg you, if you feel at any time that any of these are relevant, please do contact our pastoral care team. We would love to walk a road of healing with you and carry the burden with you. Some of the general symptoms are general unhappiness and inefficiency, where you feel a lack of enthusiasm, where you feel indecisive, where there's a loss of energy for simple things. Getting up out of bed is a chore. Brushing your teeth is a chore. Getting dressed is a chore. Physical illness. Now, it's interesting that depression often causes the illness because it suppresses the immune system. But many times, too, the illness that you have can cause the depression. For those that are married, there may be a decreased interest in sexual things. And the loss of interest in this area and the inability to perform will obviously place more stress and strain on the marriage which then further exacerbates the depression. Low self-esteem and withdrawal. You feel discouraged and unmotivated. You're bored with life. You, there's a lack of self-confidence, a strong desire to withdraw from others. And we have seen this. We're active members of the church, have withdrawn because the pressures 
of this world and this life are just getting too much for them. If this is you, again, reach out, pick up your phone and say, I need help. And lastly, suicidal ideation. Suicide and suicide attempts are cries for help. The contemplation and consideration of suicide is a very telling sign that you are battling with depression. Do not leave it unattended. Please reach out. Now that we know the signs of depression and who battle and who battled with depression in the past, I would like us to turn to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 to 15. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. There are four things that I take from this scripture passage, and I'm coming back to those four historical figures that I mentioned earlier on. Those figures battled with depression, and yet God used them mightily. Many of the effects of what they did in their time and era, we still benefit from today. And this is the hope we have as children of God and as light bearers in Christ Jesus. So firstly, Paul says this, we were under incredible pressure. That's the first point. Secondly, we as Christ bearers are life bearers. Christ followers, we are life bearers and light bearers. The same spirit that raised Christ dwells in you and I. And we are to be sure that the excellence of power may be of God and not of us, and inside of that, being thankful. Starting with the first one, Paul under pressure. Hard-pressed, not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. I would love to ask if you can say the same about yourself. Or do you feel like the world has collapsed around you? COVID has pressed us on every side. We are perplexed because we have prayed fervently, asking God to intercede, and we do not understand why. It still is with us. We experience being struck down, as I mentioned earlier. So many have tried to start businesses, and it has failed. So many of us get stuck in our circumstances and what is going on around us. We allow the world around us to influence our feelings. We allow our feelings to become our truth and to determine our identity. Two. We are life bearers. In Christ, we can and do bring life to situations. We have the authority to bring about the change we desire to see in our families, our workplaces, and in our schools. 
In Christ, we have creative ideas. When we step into a room, we as Christ followers determine the climate of that room. This does not give us authority to be arrogant, but we raise the standard of righteousness. We, we bring the message of hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which brings life to those who are in despair, those who are crushed, those who are forsaken, those who feel destroyed. And it's not for just those out there. It is for each of us. I am reminded here of 1 Thessalonians 5.14, where it says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. If one member is hurting, the whole body is hurting. Each of us is needed to, to be reminded that we are life bearers in a time where there is so much death. We are to encourage each other when many are feeling discouraged. Number three, the raising Holy Spirit power is in us. Matthew 10 verse 8 says to us, Jesus instructs the, his disciples to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. And he says this, freely you have received, freely give. Now, I don't know about you, but I must admit that this scripture challenges me a lot because I look around and I think, Lord, I am praying for people to be healed. And men, some have died, some have healed. And for that, we thank the Lord. And it's not a lack of faith. I feel to reassure you that it's not a lack of faith when somebody dies after we've prayed for them. We have to admit that Jesus remains sovereign inside of us and that his Holy Spirit power still remains within us. We need to persevere. We need to continue to be encouraged in the power of the Holy Spirit. This instruction Jesus gave to his disciples as he was sending them out into the world we too are sent. We have been given an instruction to share the gospel and make disciples. We have the same authority that the disciples were given. Jesus tells us that he is greater in us than he that is in the world. And when we look at COVID, we should look at it through the lens of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus remains the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Prince of Peace. He is sovereign and remains in control. We speak life into every situation when we speak the word of God. God's word is life-giving, and more so when we practice it. Number four, God's glory in us and through us. There is nothing like gratitude and thankfulness that helps to defeat depression. Counting our blessings inside the storms. I have found in my own life, the more grateful I am, the more authority I walk in. I'd like to share some of what I am thankful for. I am thankful for my salvation in Jesus Christ. I am thankful that in times of sorrow, he comforts me. I am thankful that inside of the trials, he gives me joy. And I'm thankful that inside of the turmoil and chaos, he gives me peace. I do not want to downplay what you are going through, nor do I want to say that hearing all this should immediately lift you out of depression either. What I am saying is, do not walk this journey alone. The greatest contrib contributor to depression is silence. I end with reminding us that depression does not define us. Christ does. Christ can and does despite this depression. And here again, I refer back to those people that I mentioned earlier on. Use us. God raises us up 
and sets us apart as his people to be life bearers and light bearers in a time when the world only sees sickness and death. We carry the glory of God in us. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same that resides in you and I. Let us encourage each other. Let us bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6 verse 2. And let us be our brother or sister's keeper at this time. Let us encourage each other to rise up and live out our Christ potential that the glory of God may abound in us and through us. Let us not walk a road of depression alone. Let us reach out to each other. Don't wait for someone to call you. Pick up the phone and tell someone you need help. And if God places someone in your heart today, please pick up the phone and call them. They're there because God wants you to reach out and walk a road with them. I'd like to pray for two people. I'd like to pray for those battling with depression and very specifically for those that are battling with COVID weariness. And the second group is for those that would desire to give their lives to Jesus. If this is you, please, in any one of these, and you have, you feel that you are somebody who has, who's battling with depression, please Use the connection card in the chat and contact us that we can walk a road with you. Also, please use the prayer cards that we can pray with you. And if you are somebody who has prayed to ask Christ into your life, we'd love to walk a road of discipleship with you. Please contact us. And before I end, I'd also like to mention that there is altar ministry prayer after this on Zoom. If you are, you are in need of somebody just to talk to and pray with, please make use of that. That is found in the, um, what, in the chat as well and also on the WhatsApp groups. Let's pray for those that are battling with depression and COVID weariness. Father God, I come before you in in the name of your Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we are in a time that is that's not unique to this world and does not surprise you. You have walked this road with many before. I thank you that you walk it with us. Father, I pray for those that are battling with depression, that are battling with COVID weariness, Lord, where the load of hearing the deaths and the sicknesses is almost so overwhelming that, Lord, they don't even want to pick up their phones for fear of what it will tell them. I pray, Father, that, Lord, today you will infuse them with your Holy Spirit. You will encourage them, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit inside of them. Father, I pray your blessing upon them for your light to flood their being and to drive out the darkness. Father, I pray that you give them the courage to reach out and say, I need help. And I pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For those of you that don't know Jesus or you've you've known Jesus, but you've turned away and you don't feel that you really have a place, you don't feel that you're worthy to come back to him, I encourage you today to know this about Jesus. His arms are wide open and he desires for you to come back and he desires for you to turn to him. You don't need to make your life right first. If this is you, please pray after me. Jesus Christ, thank you that you came to die for me. Lord, I confess that I am a sinner and in need of a savior and a Lord to guide me in my life. Father God, thank you that your word promises that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, thank you.
that I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Grace Phil, for that encouraging message. It has really made me make some sense of the kind of suffering that we go through and has reminded me that, you know, in the midst of everything, we can still experience the joy of God and we're not alone. Um, and we can really just put our hope in God. So thank you again for that. So I'd now like to share with you all the announcements for the week. Um, today, after our service from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., we have our live connected series. And this week is part four of the four part series. You're more than welcome to join in any part of this series. So even if you've missed the previous ones, you can even join right now. Please RSVP at admins at enghb.org. The email address for this is also below your screen if you uh, missed that. And the next announcement that I would like to make is about our tithes and offerings. What a blessing it is to be able to partner with Jesus in his ministry. And you know what? We actually, when we give our tithes, we're just giving him back the money that he's given us. And I just want to thank everyone that has been faithfully giving during this pandemic. I know that it has been very tough for a lot of people financially. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for that. If you would like to give, please make use of the banking details that you can see on the screen. And if you want to give to something specific, let's say furniture, you can then reference furniture um, in the banking details when you make your payment. So after the service, we have a prayer meeting on Zoom. And if you would like to pray for yourself, for um, a family member or if it's just something that you've gone through that has been really challenging and difficult for you please feel free to reach out to one of our prayer team members who will really um, be more than willing to pray with you and hear what you have to say so yeah we're more than um, willing to support you during the the tough times and you can join this meeting by using the meeting ID details that is below your screen. Or you can use the link to join the Zoom meeting that is in the comment section on Facebook. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone that has um, donated towards the food drive that we had last week. We will be using those food supplies to support people that have been um, severely affected by the looting and have not been able to you know even go and purchase food items thank you very much and yeah that's all from me i hope that you will have a super duper awesome and fruitful week ahead of you and i will see you next sunday bye, -bye.